So we're going to take a look at how to play the lead parts on Melissa by the Almond Brothers, and we're not going to look at every single note that Dickie Betts played, but some of the licks he did on all the other ones are just variations, and at the end we're going to look at a little bit more how we can improvise around with this stuff. We've got it broken down to three parts, the verse, the chorus, and the bridge, and I'm going to play along with the backing track for each of them so you can see it and hear it in context, and then we're going to break down what's going on. So let's get right into it and listen to the intro verse part, and then we'll see what's going on. So first off, this song is in the key of E, so it revolves all around the E major pentatonic, classic Alma Brothers stuff. There are some chords that do go outside the key, but uh, we'll show you how, how we navigate around that. But it's all just this, you know, E major pentatonic stuff. We'll get a little more of that later on, especially at the end when we see how we can kind of just do our own uh, thing and improvise around the uh, the jam section, which really isn't a jam section because they faded out in the studio recording. But the backing track I've got made, I kept it going for another three, four minutes. And I will put a link to that in the description down below and in a card or end screen, whatever you call it, the end of the video will be on the side there. You can just click it, go right to it, and try all this stuff out yourself and follow along with the charts. So anyways, what is going on here? Starts off, kicks it in, right, acoustic guitar, and then plays this beautiful line, kicking it off to just ease into it as the band comes in. And uh, right here, here's our E, right? Here's our little pentatonic thing. He starts off, though, outside the scale. He's bent, pre-bending it, right, like this. Releases it, pulls off, and stops it. And uh, so it's playing this hitting this G so briefly so so it's a it's a minor note there so while it's playing revolving around the shapes of uh, mostly the E major pentatonic there's some some stuff bending outside of it right there so we're going but then going right down it and then boom right down to that E actually not even any vibrato just kind of just letting that note go and then a measure off, right? And that's it with that lick there. So really it's something to just work out the fingering exactly how you want to do it. There's no exact way. Um, you know, I used to obsess about how to finger exact, you know, chords, licks, those things like that. And uh, in the end, it's kind of like whatever works for everybody's hands are a little different. So don't think that just because I do it away or you try to find a video of Dickie Betts doing it a certain way that you have to do it that way too. Kind of try out different ways and see what works, you know, for you. But the next one uh, is going up here. You can see a, pa a pattern here. Whenever he's playing a long note, it's often a chord tone. So when he gets down to the end here, he's playing E. Wait, when he hits E. Now he's climbing up, going up instead of down. And this is a B, which is part of the part of the E chord as, as well. And then we've got, which over oh, right here talking about fingering, this is, I just got tripped up. I like to do the last note with this finger because it gets you into this note a lot easier. So, so you got, it's a lot easier to do that. So that's something you gotta, I forgot about that. You gotta work that out. And then um, that's going into the course. Well, let's give that a listen first and hear how it sounds and then we'll see what's going on there. So yeah, I was jumping the gun there, doing the lick that we were getting into the chorus with. You've got... And then, talking about chord tones again, he's just hitting right on the, the, the note. So here's an A, here's an A, B minor, C sharp minor, so C sharp, D, but then throws in a little, bend, E, same thing, roots, 
F sharp minor, and then here, G sharp minor, but now he's mixing up a little bit and going. And that right there is bending to, when we go on the C major seven, there's a G in that chord. Bending up to it. And then the fifth of B. And if you don't know all this stuff, all these chord tones, don't worry about it, but just highlighting that, that he's stressing the notes of the chords, he's following right along with it. I mean, it couldn't be more clear with the beginning of it, just climbing right up there. So, um, when in doubt, you know, we don't know how to play, you're trying to make up some line yourself, you can just follow along, but just add a little twist there to make it melodic so it's not too, too predictable and too um, boring, because he's climbing up. Just that little thing adds so much. And then, and then doing a lot more here. And then this thing here, which I use my volume pedal for, which it's out on the other side of the room, but uh, I could try with my thing here. I don't know if you use my uh, volume knob, but. So nice there, he does that every time um, after the chorus right there, that same thing. And then at one point, the last time he does it actually down, down here. Just down uh, an octave and stuff, and that's that's it for the uh, the chorus part. And let's check out the bridge and then see what's going on there. So this one starts off with E as well, but then it's a big twist, D, A, B, then it's climbing up the scale, hangs on that B, and then resolves it back to the E. And uh, this little line, you know, going into a little pentatonic thing. And then we've got hitting the root again, that E. That's the third of D. Of A, root of B, and then that's the uh, major, sorry, the minor third of C sharp minor, and then easing down into the same note, which is now the fifth of A, so it's same note but changes its relationship with a different chord, and then we've got down here, bending up essentially to the B, but instead of just playing the B, he's got that, and then a little pentatonic thing with this extra note here, we'll talk about this in a second, this, um, this four, to bring it right back nice and easy on the root of not only this chord here, but the root of the whole key, um, the, the E and stuff. So things you can do um, with soloing around, the whole thing kind of improvising around these, these little pentatonic Licks because all the other, you know, that's the second time he goes through the verse course, or this three times, it's a lot of the same stuff, it's just slight variations. So you can just make variations of the things you already know with that, but you can also kind of just explore more with the pentatonic notes. And an easy way to do that is just this shape right here. So much you can do with just that. And then if you want to mix it up, throw in this note, especially this one right here, he's doing this all the time. That should just sound like, you know, real Almond Brothers there. And then over here. So it's a good one to uh, explore around with. And again, if you want to try it out with the track, that goes extended and it's just a great way to just try it out. I got the charts there so you can follow along and just use your ear and find out little things that you like. Try out this, the notes and try different ways of bending them, uh, adding lots of pull-off slides to get real smooth with it and all that stuff. But that's the framework of what's going on with Dickie Betts playing on. Melissa, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, if you got your guitar with you, head on over to the uh, backing track 
Now hit that subscribe button if this stuff's helpful for you and you want to see more content like this and then I'll hopefully see you in the next video.